as of this video's posting, The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind is 15 years old. Released on May 1st, 2002, Morrowind is still considered by many to be the favorite of the series, myself included. Although for me, I didn't actually play the game until a couple years after it launched, and it was with this Game of the Year edition that I first experienced the land of Dark Elves and Silt Striders. And it's a nice enough box, I suppose, but I much prefer the massive Collector's Edition, clad in matte black and embossed glossy artwork. Definitely a centerpiece of any PC game collection, but good luck finding a complete copy of this for less than 200 bucks. Inside this edition, you not only get the game and construction set discs, along with the standard manual and fold-out map poster, but there's also the phenomenal soundtrack by Jeremy Soule on CD. In addition, you get the 48-page Art of Morrowind book, which is a real treat if you want to see more concept art than the in-game loading screens provide. And finally, there's the 2.5-inch Pewter Ordinator figurine. But yeah, the typical small box North American release is pretty tame in comparison, but at least it comes with a map and full color manual, both of which I admired and analyzed endlessly back when I first played this. However, if you were in one of the European territories where Ubisoft distributed the game, you might have had this fantastic bundle. It has an inner package that slides out and unfolds, revealing more artwork, as well as the manual, map, and CDs tucked inside in a way that's much more visually appealing than the ugly cardboard tray we got over here. And of course, there were the two official expansion packs, Tribunal and Blood Moon, which I have thanks to a generous donation. Thank you very much for that! This content was included in the Game of the Year edition, but they're sweet little boxes on their own, and they came packaged with their own separate maps as well. A welcome thing indeed for the cartographically inclined. And finally, there's the Xbox version, the only other platform that Morrowind appeared on outside the PC. Despite its drawbacks due to hardware limitations, it was received rather well and ended up being the 15th highest selling game on the system. And finally, there's the Morrowind Prophecies, this one being the Game of the Year edition, which is a gigantic 416-page strategy guide by the venerable Peter Olofsson. Not a requirement in the days of online walkthroughs, but holy crap, the detail this thing goes into is darned impressive. Morrowind deserved it, too. This was a game with nearly a decade-long legacy in 2002, with years of hype building up to it after Arena, Daggerfall, Battlespire, and Redguard established the brand up to that point. Crazy to think that it almost happened completely differently, too, with Bethesda teasing it as far back as 1997 with this note inside the box for Battlespire. Yeah, a Morrowind in 1998 would have been quite a different beast indeed, but instead they scrapped the X engine used since Daggerfall and went with Gamebryo predecessor Net Immerse, also used in games like Freedom Force and Prince of Persia 3D. <sighs> Alright, are you still with me? Good, because you're about to have an eargasm, courtesy of Jeremy Soul. Hearing just the few opening notes of the Morrowind theme, or heck, any of the soundtrack to this game, fills me with all manner of joy and wonder and adventure and just... Oh, this game is so awesome, and we haven't even gotten past the main menu yet. Once you do get past this menu and start a new game, you're presented with a quote and a creepy yet soothing voice whispering sweet ambiguities in your ear. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? Yeah, this is actually quite a departure from the preceding Elder Scrolls games in terms of introductions. No hair metal, no cheesy FMV, no complicated stat screens. Instead, in what would become a Bethesda game tradition, Morrowind starts you off as a blank slate to determine your identity through the narrative while also acting as a quick tutorial. The setup is that you're an anonymous prisoner who's just landed on the Isle of Vardenfell within the Tamriel territory of Morrowind. 
You're about to be released, but first you have to fill out the required paperwork, which sets you up to perform all the classic CRPG character creation stuff. Choose your sex, your appearance, and your race, some of which will have long-standing consequences throughout the game due to skill bonuses, special abilities, and the people of Morrowind's individual biases. You'll also choose a class or create your own. Always a lovely opportunity to completely screw up your game before it even starts if you don't know what you're doing. After this, you're given a set of final obligations to fulfill as an ex-con, which involves delivering a package to a man in the town of Balmora. And yeah, that is all you have to go on. You are on your own. And wow, it does not seem like a decade and a half has passed. Morrowind may not have the grandest opening act or the prettiest opening scenery, but there's still something special about stepping through that door for the first time and walking out into the village of Seda Neen. It's just you, some basic inventory and a journal against the entire rest of the world. You have a map, but other than a few vague markings and territorial outlines, it's empty. Furthermore, there are no quest markers or arrows pointing you in a certain direction. It's completely up to you as to what to do next and how to get there. Heck, you don't even have to go anywhere, since every single village, fortress, town, and city is packed full of stuff to do and NPCs to talk to. It's easy to feel overwhelmed when a CRPG throws you into the deep end from the beginning like this, but in this case, I wouldn't have it any other way. The volcanic, mushroomy world of Morrowind is downright enthralling to explore from the start, and the sense of freedom and self-motivated advancement is a continual pleasure even after all these years. Well, for the most part. I like to think I'm not completely blinded by nostalgia when it comes to Morrowind, even if it remains one of my favorite games. But there are tiresome quirks and major aggravations all throughout its 60 plus hour main storyline, with plenty more if you continue on to the countless hours of side quests and expansion pack territories. And I'm not just talking about bugs and glitches, of which there actually are quite a few still, but a lot of it really is just how the game is designed. Some of these issues I don't find as bad as their reputation suggests, namely the combat. As with prior games in the series, the combat in Morrowind is based on percentages and stats. So just because you see a visual representation of you swinging a sword into some dude's face, it doesn't mean you'll actually hit them unless the invisible dice rolls in your favor. It also evolves the mouse cursor swiping of Arena and Daggerfall, and meshes it with typical first-person game controls. So when combining your attack with movements and held down keys, you'll get different animations and attacks. The options menu actually lets you override this and always use the best attack, which I typically do because I'm lazy, and also because I don't find it any more rewarding or beneficial not to use it. Naturally, players have debated the merits of this for years, but either way, you're stuck with the same animations, playing over the same dice rolls that lead to the link between the player and the combat, feeling loose at best. I find that this is mostly a problem in the early hours of the game where you're still a 97 pound weakling, since once you level up past a certain point and boost those sweet combat skills, the fighting becomes a whole lot more enjoyable. Not exactly what I'd call excellent or anything, but a bit more satisfying at least. And since the vast majority of Morrowind's gameplay takes place after you've gotten good, I genuinely don't find the combat to be this ultimate deal breaker. Uh, unless we're talking about freaking cliff racers, because screw those guys. They gang up on you, follow you around forever, and are harder to hit than seemingly anything else, even with all the high-level combat skills you can find. And speaking of skills, in Morrowind your skills are increased by using them, rather than, say, picking from a list of upgrades when you level up. Instead, while leveling, you increase your primary attributes, and these in turn determine the maximum level of their associated skills. But the skills themselves are upgraded by simply playing the game. A common exploit of this system is to run and jump absolutely everywhere, which will increase your athletics and acrobatic skills pretty quickly. And with as slow of a runner and weak of a jumper you are at the start, you absolutely will want to take advantage of this just to make getting around the game that much less of a slog. There are also trainer NPCs dotted throughout the world, which is fine and dandy, but not only is it an annoying string of menu options to go through each time, but the only thing standing in your way of epic skills is money. Talk about missing the point of a strict skill system where you only learn by doing, since most of it can be ignored entirely by being rich. And thankfully, getting rich is a ton of fun, and is the entire point of the game, at least as far as how I play. It doesn't matter what kind of grandiose plans I make for myself or what kind of totally new character I generate, I always end up becoming a sneaky, murderous kleptomaniac. 
It's just, dude, there's so much shiny stuff just lying around. Who can resist? And if your character is good at talking to people on top of that, then a bit of flattery and bribery is par for the course when fencing your stolen loot. This stuff is seriously like 90% of why I still go back to Morrowind, because the gameplay loop of sneaking, stealing, and bartering is just hugely entertaining. About the only thing bringing it down is the experience of bashing your head against the UI, trying to actually sell stuff and keep track of what you have. This brings me to my next big gripe with Morrowind, the user interface. Just all of it. You've got these windows you can drag around and resize, which is fine, but the actual information contained within leaves a lot to be desired. Not only is there a lack of really detailed sorting abilities, but the same vague icons are often repeated for items with completely different attributes, and the way they're laid out here seems scatterbrained and an inefficient use of on-screen real estate. Same goes for your quest tracking journal, which was improved through the Tribunal expansion to allow filtering by active quests. But even then, it's still only what I would call a tolerable experience. These chronologically sorted pages make it a bit easy to get flustered trying to find an obscure piece of information that you received forever ago, making me wish for a search function or maybe even a way to add your own notes in game. But by far the bigger pain when it comes to managing text is the speech and conversation system, which is about as pleasant as a wet fart in an elevator. To be clear, I'm referring to the interactive dialogue, not the short barks and phrases NPCs speak when you move close by. Khajiit has no words for you. In a step back from Redguard, Morrowind does not feature fully voiced dialogue, which makes sense seeing as this game is orders of magnitude larger. But when combined with the awful text windows you have to navigate, conversations end up being more overwhelming and annoying to navigate than ever. There's tens of thousands of lines in-game, and I swear it seems like a single NPC can contain half of them at once. In theory, I have no problem with copious dialogue, but when it's a chore to deal with, I just tune out. And that's unfortunate, because there is a slew of captivating lore in Morrowind, but hell if I'm gonna waste my time sludging through it with this bland wall of hyperlinks. Compare this to the conversation system in Fallout as an example, where you have similar amounts of dialogue, yet because of the way it's divided up and presented, it's friendlier to interact with and feels much more conversational. But enough complaining for now. Once you come to terms with Morrowind's strangeness, its sheer awesomeness shines through, and it is something special indeed. Whether you're going through the main storyline or creating your own destiny being sidetracked by wayward women, it seems like there's always something new and enjoyable to experiment with. A lot of this comes from the various guilds and organized groups you can pledge allegiance to. Got trouble dealing with pent-up rage? Join the Fighters Guild. Have a penchant for magic and trapping souls? Join the Mages Guild. Can't keep your hands off of anything ever? Join the Thieves Guild, if you can find them. Tired of having BDSM dudes beating you up while you're trying to sleep? Track down the Dark Brotherhood and be sure to bring your own whip. And who can forget the various great houses, religions, and cults that you can join and take advantage of? Each one of these groups and guilds comes with their own set of rules, duties, advancement opportunities, spells, potions, and skills to learn. And personally, I find completing these quest lines to be far more intoxicating than the main story. That's not to say that the main story is boring or anything, far from it. I won't spoil it here, but let me just say that once you find out what the disembodied voice was droning on about in the beginning of the game, the journey you'll take to fulfill your destiny is quite the fantastical thing indeed. But, you know, good luck keeping focused when there are spells to mix, valuable items to enchant, Dwemer artifacts to collect, and frozen barrows to raid. You can even turn invisible, spawn monsters, walk on water, and fly away using levitation. It's just absurd the amount of stuff you can do and the combinations of cool things you can come up with with magic and skills and all the items. I just, I love this stuff, man. This kind of open-ended, player-driven gameplay is happily reminiscent of classic tabletop role-playing games while remaining approachable and just challenging enough to keep you engaged for hours on end. Later Elder Scrolls games tend to be a bit simpler in this regard, and while clearly some aspects of Morrowind needed streamlining, it can be argued that they went too far in some ways later on, and then Morrowind is the last of its kind. And if you want to play it today and have a PC that isn't made of turds, it's incredibly straightforward and easy to do so. Unlike several of the older Elder Scrolls, Morrowind has never really been far from reach, and is still playable on modern operating systems, and is currently for sale on digital distribution platforms like GOG and Steam. 
There was also the Elder Scrolls Anthology, released in 2013, that contained a physical copy of the Game of the Year edition, alongside all the other mainline Elder Scrolls to that point, so it's a decent little jumpstart to your collection if you don't want the individual boxes. And finally, I have to mention the modding scene, which has always been a key part of the Morrowind experience due to Bethesda bundling it with the construction set. This is a comprehensive bunch of editing tools and is the same SDK Bethesda used to create the game itself, so it allows you to do pretty much anything you can think of. And the modding scene is still thriving through sites like Nexus Mods, complete open source engine revamps like OpenMW, and large scale content compilations like Morrowind Overhaul. There are fan-made mods, patches, and tweaks to address practically every shortcoming I mentioned throughout this review, so if you look in the right places and spend a certain amount of time, you can basically forget everything negative I said and make Morrowind the most perfect game in the history of time. Yeah, maybe that's a bit much, it's still got some issues, but my point is that this game's player-guided agenda just doesn't stop and continues well beyond what comes in the package. Quite simply, if you haven't played Morrowind yet, I implore you to give it a shot. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of things to see and do and experience to the degree that there's a good chance that your favorite thing in the game might be something I didn't even mention. Morrowind is just a big, beefy, beautiful role-playing experience, and I fully expect us to still be talking about it in another 15 years. It is by no means perfect, but it's still what I would call a masterpiece in its own admittedly flawed way. And yes, in case you're wondering, I am quite curious about the Morrowind expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online. I don't know if there's going to be a video, but there are other Elder Scrolls videos that I've done already and more to come in the future, so stay tuned, and thank you for watching.